Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm not exaggerating. That's so nice. What's up guys? In today's video we have traveled a little bit further east here in Turkey. We are in the food capital of Turkey. We're in a city called Gaziantep. Uh, this city is very famous for food and some people say it is the best place in Turkey to get food. So we're gonna go test that theory, see if it is true or not. But aside from that, we're also gonna go explore what else you can do here in Gaziantep. We're gonna go see some of the other famous sites that Gaziantep is known for. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm hungry already. Let's go get some food. Our first stop here is, I guess, a pretty famous place in Gaziantep. We've come for Katmer, which is a little bit strange for me because I swear Katmer is a dessert, but we're here for breakfast. So I guess that's a, a common thing in Turkey as well, to have Katmer as breakfast. Yeah, it's definitely eaten at breakfast as well. Um, I'm super excited to try this. It's very traditional and it's a nice place in here too. Okay, the Katmer has arrived. This looks absolutely delicious. It looks bomb. <laughs> Let's dig in. I'm gonna go for a big piece here. Oh wow, that is delicious. That is so good. That is delicious. It's a bit of a sweet breakfast today. Yeah, it's very sweet, but surprisingly it doesn't taste very heavy. It tastes quite light. It's sweet, but it's got like this cheesy flavor too, so it's a little bit savory. Once again, our eyes were bigger than our stomachs and <laughs> This is, this is so much food. I oh know, I literally just said it's light and after another few slices, I'm so full right now. Yeah, we did our best. I mean, we're definitely going to finish this, but <laughs> I'm going to need to walk around and take a break from food already after this. Yeah, definitely. So that was probably the most famous place here in Gaziantep for Katmer. Maybe in all of Turkey, I'm not too sure, but apparently it's been there for about four generations and they've been passing on the skills for four generations. Katmer is like a thin pastry that they put clotted cream, sugar, and pistachio in it. And this one specifically specifically is cooked in a stone oven, which I guess is the best way to have it. It's absolutely delicious, but we're both stuffed right now. So we're gonna go work this off, wander around the streets of Gaziantep, see what else you can do in the city. stumbled onto but we have come down into this coffee shop or what we think is a coffee shop it's essentially just a cave <laughs> it's very beautiful here but we have no idea Lauren was looking for a coffee and this is not what we were expecting to do yeah it's nice when you find places when you least expect to stumble upon them it's pretty cool yeah these are my favorite kind of places to come to I don't actually know the name of that place or even where it was, to be honest. We totally just stumbled on it, but we are a little bit off the beaten path here and nobody speaks English in a lot of the places that we've been so far already. I don't know for sure. That place looked like it might be almost 500 years old. There were some signs in there that kept saying 1557. So I actually think that that coffee shop or that cave or whatever it used to be or what it is now, it's roughly about 500 years old, I think, which is kind of crazy. Besides Gaziantep being famous for food, there were a few other places that we were recommended to check out in the city. We've just come to this museum now, which is actually a mosaic museum. We believe it's the biggest mosaic museum in the world. That's the name up there. We think it's pronounced Zuma, but yeah, it looks really cool in pictures and we're gonna go and check it out.
to my understanding, this ancient city here called Zoma was discovered or at least unearthed in the early 2000s. So it's really not that old actually. And all these beautiful mosaics here and the ones that I was just showing you before behind, they're so well preserved. They're from just over a thousand years ago. I think somewhere around second or third century AD. It's so cool. Those mosaics are so well preserved. It's very, really cool to see it like that. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever been to a mosaic museum before. So highly recommend visiting this museum if you are in Gaziantep. But the whole purpose of us coming to Gaziantep was to try some delicious food. Gaziantep specifically is famous for baklava and kebab. So I'm feeling a little bit hungry again. Let's go get some kebab. Just come to this place here. I can't remember who recommended it, but it's called Kebab Che Halil Usta. Actually, this place we just learned has a fixed menu, so we don't actually know what we're ordering. I got a spicy kebab, Lauren's just getting a mild kebab, I guess, but immediately from sitting down, it already smells so good in here. It seems quite popular. There's a lot of people in here. And we were greeted with some salads automatically and some bread, so. So our waiter here just brought us some uh, meat on the house to try. So I think it's lamb, but I don't know. Sorry, I'm vegetarian. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. Wow, that is some of the best meat I've ever tasted before. That was really good lamb. Very, very good. Okay, our meat has arrived. It's looking absolutely delicious as always. But here in Gaziantep, they are very famous for their meat, so we will be eating a lot of that. And more specifically for its lamb, which is different from the other parts of Turkey that we've been so far. I guess here in the southeast of Turkey, lamb is much more popular, which I really love because lamb is one of my favorite meats. I find it so tender and so flavorful. I'm literally salivating right now thinking about eating this, so I'm going to dig right in. I've also really loved lamb, and I've been missing it, but I think I've had it since last Christmas, so... Oh wow, that is so good. And it's really tender as well, it's not too chewy. This is one thing I've really been anticipating here since we've been talking about coming here to Gaziantep for months actually, is how good the food is. And this looks so good. Oh, amazing, amazing. And our waiter just brought us some more sampled meat here. So another thing that we have learned in Gaziantep and that people have told us is that the hospitality here is unmatched and unlike anywhere else in the world. They're super hospitable people here and they always take care of you and want to give you extra food. I'm not complaining. Me neither, it's great. <laughs> and last but not least, they gave us these really cool cups with some Iran. If you guys haven't seen our past videos, Iran is like a salty, milky kind of drink. It's really hard to explain, but it's grown on me. I really like it now. This is delicious. I'll go as far as saying as that was one of the best meals I've had here in Turkey, maybe in a very long time to be honest. And it's a little bit difficult to see behind me, but this place is unlike anywhere I've ever been before. The structures here, the architecture, it feels almost like we're in the Middle East. We're very close to the Syrian border right now, so that's probably why everything looks that way. But yeah, this is very cool. Very different from where we've been in Turkey so far. Our next stop today is a place called Gaziantep Castle. Actually, a very interesting thing about Gaziantep is apparently it is one of the oldest inhabited places on earth. I'm not sure how far back that dates, but it's very fascinating to learn these things. And I guess this castle was, uh, was built hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands of years ago to protect the city of Gaziantep. So we're gonna go explore the castle. As always, castles have the best views of a city. So let's go see what's up here.
actually there's a lot of very recent history here in uh, this castle as well. We were reading about some stuff that was talking about the First World War and the British occupation and the French and Armenians and the Greeks and it sounds like everybody occupied this place at one point but this castle is pretty cool. I always enjoy coming to these kinds of places because you kind of get your bearings straight and you get to see like the entire area of where you're staying and I'll be honest Gazantep's a lot bigger than we were expecting originally. I like it here. It's different. The only downside of this place, and I totally understand if it's out of safety, but everything is closed off so I can't actually go to the edge there and see all the best views. As you can see behind me, the city's very beautiful. Very, very cool. Last stop for today is we came to this place that we found online that seems to be quite popular for baklava and we've got quite a few different types of baklava. I'm not actually sure the intricacies of them. I don't know the differences between them all but we've got quite a bit of baklava here so I hope you're still hungry. I'm really hungry and excited for this. It looks like we've got a few different types and this one looks like kind of like a dessert so I'm excited for that one. But... Yeah, this place is really cool and I think it's another family-run business, so yeah, it's really nice in there. Very lush. There is no ladylike way of doing this. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that one's really nice. This was Lauren's idea, so I hope it's good. <laughs> Mm. It's creamier than the other baklavas. It's, I, it almost feels like there is actually cream in it, maybe ice cream, I don't know, but that's good. That's very good. If anybody knows what that is or even what the difference between all of these baklavas are, please let us know down in the comments. I think you're meant to just take the whole thing. <laughs> what, like actually use my hands? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. This shouldn't give you the fault then. <laughs> butchering the baklava. Oh, oh my god. The dessert one is nice, but that one is like the one. The pastry and everything, yeah. I prefer like normal baklava. So one thing I have learned from watching other videos is you're actually supposed to flip it upside down and eat it that way, mm -hmm. so. You can taste the butter in it. It's delicious. Not sure what this one is, but. Hmm. So much pistachio just went flying out of your mouth when you bit into that. It's a lot lighter and it doesn't have all the little pistachio in the middle with the like syrup, but it's good. It sounded crunchier as well. Yes, but I still like the traditional one the most. I also have no idea what the difference between this one and the other ones are, but I can tell you that so far Gazintep does not disappoint when it comes to food, especially baklava and kebab. As I said, the food here in Gaziantep does not disappoint. So that's the end for today. We cannot possibly eat any more food today. We'll be back tomorrow with some more adventures and some more delicious food, hopefully. Definitely more food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's day two now. We are off to go get some breakfast and check out some more places in the city here. Okay, our first stop of the day is we have come to this place called Matanet Locantisa, which I guess is quite a popular place here. And I already really like the vibe here. It's such a nice place. It's not so built up and it seems more like it's like family run and reminds me of places that we used to eat in in Vietnam. Yeah. I guess Bayran is like a lamb soup, so I got mine spicy, of course. Yeah, I just got mine a little spicy. But... Yeah. <laughs> okay, the food has arrived. Look at how good this looks. It looks bomb. It does look bomb. It is a little bit strange as well because lamb soup for breakfast is not something that's very common for me at least. I don't know about for you. No, the, the closest I've had this is like pho in Vietnam with the beef and the noodle soup, but I've never had lamb for breakfast. Let's see how this tastes. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the meat is so tender, it just falls apart in the soup. It's very hot, so I'm gonna try not to burn my mouth here. 
Oh man, yeah. that is so good. That meat basically melts in your mouth. It's not so spicy actually, and the rice in there is really good too. It's delicious. It's really delicious, and the lamb is so nice. It's really tender, and it's not that spicy. It's That's really because good. you got the non spicy one. I know, but I still ask for a little bit of spice. So <laughs> it's, it's really good. And one of the best things as well is this homemade bread that we've got it. I haven't tried it yet, but it looks really good. And we got to see them make it down below underneath the stairs as well. So that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I think Beyran is probably one of my new favorites here in Turkey. It's just the simplicity of the dish, like the soup, the broth itself, you know, the meat is so tender and there's really not much going on with it, but it's so good. The rice inside and then just the simple spices and seasoning is so delicious. We're off to another place here to go get something that is coffee, but not really coffee. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a famous drink here in Gaziantep. So I'm really for this one. let's go try it. Lauren's been looking for something to replace her horchata. So let's see if it does that. So we've come to this place now that is famous for something called Menengic Kavisa. Kavisa means coffee, I guess. Actually, this isn't coffee. It's mm -hmm. pistachio and milk mixed together, and I guess there's no caffeine in it, so. Apparently not, which I'm not that excited about because <laughs> I love coffee, but I'm sure the flavor will be nice and it looks really cool. Yeah, but there's no caffeine in horchata either, so. That's true, and I like horchata. Shall I taste it? Absolutely. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm not exaggerating. That's so nice. It's literally like just drinking pistachio. You can taste the pistachio? Yeah. It's I'm so excited. Nice. Does it taste like coffee though? No. no. <laughs> just milk and pistachio? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Try it. I'm also gonna go ahead and say that I think I prefer this than Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee is like really bitty at the bottom and like really, I don't know how to describe it, like granularly, but this is really smooth and yeah, definitely try this if you come to Gaziantep. Can we also just take a second to appreciate what it comes in too? I love the designs of all the cups and everything that you get here in Turkey. It's so nice. Yeah, they're super cute. I really like them. All right, let's see if Lauren overhyped this or not. <laughs> Oh, that, that is, that's quite strange to be honest. It's different. I don't know if I love it as much as you do. Really? <laughs> the horchata wins this one. I, I think, think horchata is better, but this is different. And it's, I like the texture of it too, because it's really creamy. It is quite creamy. I prefer Turkish coffee. Okay, from a coffee lover, obviously it's not caffeine, but I'm gonna give it, I'll give it a seven out of 10. Only a seven? Yeah. Oh, okay, because I was gonna say like <laughs> six out of 10 for me and, and I'm not really a huge fan of it. It's, it's not terrible. There's just some different aftertaste for me. And I'm also, I should explain, I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm also not a milk drinker. No. I don't normally drink these kinds of things, so. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's not my thing, but it's good. So we just learned out too that the coffee house was built in uh, the 1600s, we believe. So it's another really old building and I think it's another one of those famous places that has been put down to generations and generations. And yeah, it's a really cute place and we really enjoyed the coffee there. It's a Sunday right now, so maybe that's the reason why. But right now, Gaziantep seems so quiet. We're just walking through these side streets and it feels like there is not very many people. You can almost hear my voice echoing right now. It's so peaceful. It feels like a ghost town, but I like it. Okay, we're taking a break from our food again and we're gonna go explore this area here called the Coppersmith Bazaar And I believe there's another bazaar in here as well that may be similar to the Grand Bazaar So we're gonna explore this area here and you can already see behind me There are so many different teacups and all kinds of different things here made of copper So I think it'll be pretty fascinating. Maybe I'll look for some gifts came into one of the shops here in the Coppersmith Market, Coppersmith Bazaar, I should say, and I bought two little things. They just invited us in here for some chai. So as you can tell, the Gaziantep hospitality is very, very real. Yeah, they're super hospitable people. So the guy here is showing us some of the things that he creates with his hands, and these are the tools that he uses. It's very cool to see, totally handmade. Yeah, it's really pretty. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this here, but if you guys are ever in Gaziantep and in the Coppersmith Bazaar, you have to come check out Orhan and his place. He is so sweet and everything he makes there is handmade. Pretty affordable prices as well. So definitely go check out Orhan's shop. 
Honestly, I could spend hours wandering around that coppersmith market. There's so many trinkets in there, I could probably spend a lot of money there as well. But we're gonna go check out the other bazaar now. Maybe there's some other stuff that we can find in there to buy as well. I think this market is much more traditional to like all the other markets that we've seen in Istanbul and etc. It looks a little bit like the Grand Bazaar and the Spice Market in Istanbul. I wish smell vision was a thing so you guys could smell how good this place smells. Lauren's looking for some pistachio to bring home. So to be honest, I think I preferred the Coppersmith Bazaar to the normal bazaar here. This one, there's tons of different pistachio things you can get, so I bought myself some pistachio snacks because they are absolutely delicious. But I think we're getting hungry again, so we're gonna go get some more food now. Okay, our last place for today is a very famous place here in Gaziantep for kebab and baklava, I guess. It's called Imam Chadash. <laughs> Actually, this isn't our first time coming here. We came here a couple days ago on our first night here and the food was amazing, so we had to come back. So one of the things we like about this place is they deliver the beginning of the meal with some salad and we ordered some jajuk, so some yogurt. And then we ordered some iran, which uh, they took as an idea that we wanted a whole soup of iran. <laughs> yeah, we have a yogurt overload here. Oh gosh, is it good though? It's funny how Iran grew on us. We never liked it in the beginning and now we love it. The first one we had was really salty, but this one is mild. I kind of like it more salty to be honest. Yeah. It's the sourness that is, I'm not a big fan of. The main course has arrived. I once again went with a lamb dish here. I forget the name of it. I, it's something Nazik or something like that. I can't remember the name, but basically it's lamb kebab inside of this dish here with some yogurt. There's some aubergine or eggplant, whichever one you call it. Some oil, it's absolutely delicious. I cannot wait to eat this right now. <laughs> Lauren got herself some patlijan kebab or again, aubergine or eggplant, whichever one you want to call it. And it's very loud in here, so I apologize for all the noise. I put a little bit of parsley on mine. I don't know if I do this right. <laughs> but you can see the aubergine there, the eggplant. So good, so so good. The best meal I've had in Gaza. That one's really good. It's a lot different to the one we had a few days ago. This is just so much yogurt, but definitely worth it. Worth all the yogurt, I would say. We have yogurt in here with the shajuk, and we also have yogurt here. And then I've also got yogurt here too. Cheers. Turkey is a yogurt overload. Okay, two days later and probably about 20 pounds heavier. Literally. <laughs> I can't possibly eat any more food. This will be the end of our Gaziantep trip. I would definitely say that Gaziantep lives up to expectations. The food here is maybe even better than I expected, to be honest. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment below of your favorite Turkish food and I will link our Instagrams down below. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.